Politics is back in this week's book review with Neville Gibson. Christopher Finlayson's Yes Minister has his account of the John Key years. Well, welcome, Neville. What does it have to say? Well, it uh, certainly says that politics is all about timing, and uh, Christopher Finlayson got the time completely right. He was in opposition for three years as the Labour government went into its decline after three terms. No government in New Zealand lasts four terms ever. And so he was uh, a sitter for the um, going into Cabinet, which as a lawyer, he was probably the most qualified person in the Cabinet as well. And so he had basically a a, a plum job for nine years, then went out and retired into a nice private life as a QC. We've just had another book, Andrea Vance's Blue Blood, um, about the National Party in and out of government. How does that compare with Yes Minister? Well, I've read them both uh, alongside each other, and they actually back each other up. In fact, uh, Finlayson turns up quite often quoted in Vance's book, and there's a lot of anonymous things in that book, though, uh, to give it a bit of an insider's view. But it's basically Blue Blood is an outsider's view, but it does, it's a, a very racy read, and it puts everything in its in its place. This is the insider's word. So there's plenty of um, uh, comment about his serious activities, which as a lawyer, he had the plum job of Attorney General, and then he also was in charge of Treaty of Waitangi Settlements and Arts and Culture and Heritage, all of which uh, is a bit like a, having your hobbies as a day job, as far as he's concerned. And you get quite a lot of insights into how he went about it, what he achieved, and that sort of thing. And I've titled my review on the website, The Nearly Perfect Minister, because nothing ever seemed to go wrong, and he seemed to get everything right. Apart from the gossipy stuff, is there anything in there for the serious reader? Well, the gossipy stuff is very good, but a lot of it's been publicised already in excerpts and in reviews, so I won't... uh I don't think people... It gives us something to read the book for. But the serious stuff is really the role of Attorney General, which is interesting because while you're in the Cabinet and you're a lawyer, you're actually acting as a kind of independent legal officer. So you can actually challenge the Cabinet and say, look, you're going to be breaking the law here because the history of Attorneys General goes right back to the 15th century when the King couldn't be in the court so he had to have somebody to represent him in the court, be they prosecuting or defending. So it's an interesting thing. Of course, it's evolved as a political post over the years in the British Commonwealth, places like Canada and Australia. So given that it is, um, I guess, viewed as a fairly low-key role within Cabinet, what does Finlayson say about it in terms of his time? Well, I think uh, it's quite important that to put a break on the government m- making laws that run against the Bill of Rights. He also spent a lot of time looking as in charge of government prosecutions, how you could speed the court processes up. He's very critical of the slow justice, the fact that some judges take months, if not even years, to make a decision. He he goes back to the time in the, when he was a lawyer in the court saying, well, sometimes the judges used to give it, well, that's still happening, give isn't it, it, it straight away, <laughs> you know, give, give a novel judgment uh, immediately after hearing the case so you don't have to wait around. And he also brought a lot of laws together. He wanted to reform the laws. In that sense, he's a bit like Geoffrey Palmer, although he has a few comments about uh, Geoffrey Palmer because he's not really a bureaucratic type. He doesn't like big government and he certainly doesn't like the law society either. Finally, um, he has his, obviously, quit politics. Um, what is? Does he give any opinion of how he sees National going in the yeah, future? I think every National Party member should read the book because he's got plenty of advice for them, especially over what's been happening over the past couple of years. He's got a, a, you know, a nine-point guide, which I won't go into, but I guess that the main thing is he still sees a lot of unfinished business. He wants to get rid of the Human Rights Commission, doesn't see that serving any purpose any longer. And also the Waitangi Tribunal, he says it's gone really right off the, the trail you know, of what it used to be, and he's very upset that the reform of Maori land law was never carried out. It was ditched by the Labour Party when they got into office in 2017, and that remains a big morass. And the Bill of Rights, if you introduce property rights into it, which he also advocates, would solve that pretty quickly. So given he's quit politics, does he have any role in the National Party in future? Well, I wouldn't say, I guess you wouldn't say never, but um, he certainly seems to have put politics behind me. He's seriously now a QC. He's got his own independent uh, practice, and I think we'll be hearing a little bit more of him, even though his time in politics was pretty low-key but nearly perfect. 
All right. Well, thanks very much, Neville Gibson. Thank you.